Hey everybody, Sean here, and I hope you're doing well. Flatirons Church is who we'll look at today, so let's jump right in. We did a video on them playing Bohemian Rhapsody in church in this video, and I think it was clear to anyone with ears to hear that singing a song from a reprobate like Freddie Mercury that has lyrics about Beelzebub having a devil set aside for us has no place in a church of God. So here's what their pastor, Jim Bergen, has to say about this. So that's what we're passionate about, but given our level of creativity, what will Flatirons leverage to accomplish what God has told us to do? Answer, everything's on the table. Everything in our world is on the table. Everything that we can lay our hands on so that we can redeem and point people to the truth that Jesus came to give. See, we go back to the model of Jesus and the Apostle Paul who wrote most of the New Testament. They quoted biblical scripture all the time, but they also quoted pagan cults, religions, myths, songs, statues, engravings, poems, politicians, philosophers, and scholars. They said things like this, your own gods, they're false, but your own gods say this, your own priests say this, your own philosophers and artists are asking great questions, but they're coming up with really bad answers because the answer can only be found in a truth that comes from Jesus. This is so cleverly worded that it almost sounds right, but to imply that Paul and others in the New Testament were quoting pagan cults and religions to point out that they had great questions, but really bad answers is a total twisting to justify what he says next and he doesn't give any examples from the Bible. Which, let me just answer a bunch of emails real quick, all right? Which is why we play music from, from everyone, from the Talking Heads to Eminem to Kendrick on Easter to Brad Paisley and everyone in between. Not because we approve of those people. Not because we approve of their lifestyle. Not because we give you know, Eminem a, a, a pass going, he treats women great. We don't believe that. We don't believe that at all. We're not saying anything about the artists, all right? But here's why we do that. Because they are asking great questions. Questions the church is afraid to ask. So he justifies them using ungodly bands because he says they have good questions that the church is afraid to ask. I'm just curious what questions were asked in their cover of Nirvana Smells Like Teen Spirit. Let's take a look at the lyrics. Load up on guns, bring your friends. Nice, guns to church maybe. It's fun to lose and pretend. She's overboard and self-assured. Oh no, I know a dirty word. Don't see any good questions there. I think what it's really all about comes to the chorus. Because that's what these mega churches are doing these days with roller coasters and rock bands. Entertaining. But let's continue with his explanation. Questions about love and about life and about sex and about identity, about value, about purpose that can only be answered and found in Jesus. That's why we do the music we do. And I'll be honest with you, all right? I'm just to be really honest, right? Sometimes we'll, we'll just play a song because it's an awesome song. <laughs> that's all oh, Skinner, any, anything, all right, all right? We'll just play, and it reflects something good that's been given to us from God, like love or passion or sex in marriage, intimacy, where to look for hope and where not to look for hope and your heart is falling apart. Listen, we'll, we'll play songs whether they mention Jesus or not because the truth they speak of comes directly from Jesus. Just because a band sings a line that says something nice that Jesus would say or agree with doesn't mean they should be playing these songs in a church. And what about all the other songs they're playing like Smells Like Teen Spirit, Bohemian Rhapsody, and a laundry list of songs from Eminem and other filthy bands? I'm not going to play his full message, but we'll leave the link below. Let's continue. Again, you might not like the volume or the song selection. You may get in your car and go, I just can't believe they, they played that song. And that's fine. That's personal taste. But don't try to make the claim that it's not biblical or spiritual. You can't find that verse. Well, how about 1 John 2.15? Do not love the world or anything in the world. If anyone loves the world, love for the Father is not in them. And including worldly music is doing just that. He says it himself. All right, I'm just to be really honest. Right? Sometimes we'll, we'll just play a song because it's an awesome song. <laughs> so he's admitting that sometimes they play worldly music in church just because they like it. This is a total compromise. And now he justifies it using scripture. So Paul writes this. He writes this to a church that's, that's arguing about this kind of stuff. He says this, For why should my freedom or my liberty be determined by somebody else's conscience? If I partake with thankfulness, why am I denounced? Why are you being critical of me because of that for which I give thanks? And I love this. So, this is all the things he's been criticized for. Whether you eat that or drink that or whatever you do, 
however loud you play it, no matter if there's drums or an organ, whatever you do, let's just use the, the, say that last that sentence together. One, two, three. Do all to the glory of God. Everything's on the table. As long as you're doing it for the glory of God. He really emphasizes whatever you do and uses it to justify playing secular music that's played by some very evil and blasphemous people. This doesn't mean that we say, thank you, Lord, as we rob a bank. Whatever you do, thank you, Lord, as you fornicate outside of marriage or anything else worldly or sinful. First Peter tells us to keep away from worldly desires. Romans 12 says don't conform to the pattern of this world. James 4 says that being friends with the world means that you're enemies with God. So whatever we do is not saying to embrace worldly things and just throw in a thank you, God. He finishes off with this. That's what we're trying to build here. We're not perfect, but that's what we're going for. So that you and your friends, and some of you are going, my friend will never come here. You would be surprised. My dad will never darken the door. Listen, I believe in Jesus. I believe what Jesus said. I believe God is doing something in their hearts right now you know nothing about. And he's preparing the day when they're finally going to go, if you'll shut up, I'll go one time. And they're going to come in here and we want to be ready for them. We want to rock their babies. We want to park their cars. We want to give them a bagel. We want to come in here. We want to melt their face with amazing music. And then we, we want... <laughs> If you watch the whole clip, it does seem that he has a heart for people to know Christ, but we don't compromise to win people to Christ. You don't go to the bar and get wasted to save wasted people. You don't get involved with witchcraft to save witches. And you don't lure people into churches with worldly things and expect people to fall in love with Jesus. People that like a church with worldly music will need to continue to have worldly music to stay in the church. I'm sure God is saving some people in these distorted churches, and that's great, but worldly things should never be the draw card to attract someone. Also, if people are getting introduced to these secular and wicked bands for the first time, it may create a desire to hear more of this band's music. We've already looked at Bohemian Rhapsody from Queen, Smells Like Teen Spirit from the twisted Kurt Cobain, we've got Eminem and Linkin Park, Michael Jackson, Bruno Mars, and the list goes on. I wouldn't want to be the church that's responsible for someone saying, I totally got hooked on Eminem when I started going to Flatirons Church. Jesus said in John 17, I have given them your word, and the world has hated them because they are not of the world, just as I am not of the world. I do not ask that you take them out of the world, but that you keep them from the evil one. They are not of the world, just as I am not of the world. Scripture is clear that we are not of this world, and we should not be involved with worldly things in order to attract people to Christ. But what do you think? As always, leave your thoughts and comments below, and until next time, take care and God bless.